LasVegas.com. Getting ready for the tip between number 14, Arizona and Pepperdine, and Lorenzo Romar in his second stint as the Pepperdine head coach had a great run at the University of Washington, his alma mater, and also was an assistant for one year yeah, how about that? to Sean Miller just a couple of years ago when DeAndre Ayton was playing for Arizona. And there is Sean Miller, three-time Pac-12 coach of the year. And there's got to be something to that. You, you understand not, not just what a team might want to do, but how the programs run. That, that, that gives you a little bit of an edge, maybe not an edge to win the game. Our Paycom starting five for Pepperdine as Arizona wins the opening tip. And you and I both talked to Lorenzo Romar and Sean Miller yesterday. And this is not something they enjoy having to go up against one another. They're very close. And it was great for them to spend a year together, and he was in a perfect spot with Lorenzo Romar coming in to help out Sean Miller. And this is not something that either coach is going to enjoy tonight. No, well, they're not going to enjoy losing. The team that wins is going to have a little bit more fun. I mean, but, but nobody likes to play against good friends. You, you really don't. Zeke Nagy didn't waste any time, did he? Leads the country in field goal percentage. It wasn't like that was a layup either. I mean, he stepped out, shot that thing with confidence. But here's what I love. Watch the Arizona bench. I talked about these young guys playing well together, playing with great energy. A lot of that comes from who you are as the team in the locker room. If you don't have good energy in the locker room, you're not going to play with that kind of swagger. This team has a special unit right now, special group. Three freshmen in the starting lineup. In fact, first time in Arizona history that true, three true freshmen starting an opening game. Zeke Nagy with a miss, a long rebound, running it up is Johnny Smith for Pepperdine. Oh, Pepperdine's clearly showing that they're going to let him shoot that shot. They just don't want Zeke Nagy anywhere near that basket. That's where he has the best or the most impact on the game. Here's Colby Ross, the dynamic point guard for Pepperdine. Kessler Edwards rattles in a three, and Pepperdine has the lead. You know, that was good defense, but better offense. Good movement, good turn the corner, find an open shooter. Strong closeout by Zeke Nagy, just a second late. The Edwards brothers, Kessler and Cameron Edwards, along with Colby Ross, account for 66% of Pepperdine's scoring this season. Here is Colby Ross, who dropped 38 on USC a couple of weeks ago. Jotty Smith from way out there. And the rebound, Colby Ross tracks it down. And you might be able to get away with that at times. You're relying so much on three guys in, in the West Coast Conference. But against this Arizona team, you're going to have to win with a little bit more balance. Cameron Edwards with the bucket. So the Edwards brothers have all five. And Pepperdine up early on number 14, Arizona. Here is the McDonald's All-American, Nico Mannion. Dylan Smith from long range ties the game. And you can see the defense is sagging. The defense isn't just sagging because they're, they're going to allow Arizona to shoot threes. They're going to force Arizona to beat them from the perimeter. They're not going to give it. If you're Pepperdine, you're not giving up easy layups at the rim. Dylan Smith has made it three in six of Arizona's first seven games. Now is a three knocked in by Skylar Chavez, who led the state of California last year at the junior college level in scoring. He averaged nearly 28 points per game at Santa Rosa Junior College. Playing for a former Wildcat, Craig McMillan, the head coach at Santa Rosa Junior College, who was Steve Kerr's backcourt mate in Lute Olson's heyday there you were just, with everything that got it going in Arizona. You were just impressing the audience with your information. Clearly, you know how to read game notes. Uh, look, I did my homework, I, I Mr. Think, look, Crispin. I, I just, I, I think we sleep on the value of having JUCO guys, right? When you talk about the junior college, like, ah, yeah, well, it's not this level. It's great experience. There are winning habits in there. You, you don't just go pour, pour in 26, 28 points a game not understanding how to play the game. So there's, there's, there's great skill in that. Timeout for Arizona. 8-5, Pepperdine, the early lead on the unbeaten Wildcats. Only one thing's more exciting than getting a Lexus. Wow. Giving one. How did you guys? Don't ask. The Lexus December to Remember sales event. Get 0% APR for 60 months on all 2019 models. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. DXL is built as the one-stop shop for big and tall guys. With sizes starting at XL, 
and over a hundred brands that fit great and look even better. DXL Big and Tall, built to fit at DXL.com. Three-point lead for Pepperdine. A look at Nico Manning and Josh Green, the McDonald's All-Americans, the 25th and 26th McDonald's All-Americans in Arizona history. And look, that's all great. That sounds good, but you still have to play at this level. These are guys that have an understanding of the game, and that's what makes them so good. Here's Nico Mannion. And the rebound pulled down by Jotty Smith for Pepperdine. Attack it in transition, and the floater and an offensive foul as Mannion draws the charge from Cameron Edwards. And I like what Sean Miller did there out of the timeout. Got Nico Mannion a good look. You, you want to get him a little rhythm in this game because he's the kind of guy like a T.J. Hawes, right? T.J. Hawes controls the rhythm of the game. That's similar to Nico Mannion. He can do that, but you got to get him involved offensively at times. Josh Green, leaner in the key. Just a lot of talent. Uh, and talent's one thing, but feel is another. And, and I think that's what makes this team good. They, they seem to have a good feel. And when you have multiple guys on the floor that make good reads, have good instincts, you develop chemistry much earlier in the season. That's why I think that's, that the start to this season, six games at home, was important for this young team. And winning those games again by an average of over 30 points a contest. Travel whistled against Cameron Edwards and Pepperdine as the Waves looking for their first win over a Pac-12 team since November of 2012 when they won at Washington State in overtime. Now you forget about the, the success that Pepperdine's had in the past. You talk yeah. about the early 90s. We were talking about that with Lorenzo Romar. This, this was a program that was on the map, and Lorenzo Romo was trying to put him back on it. He had success there, but yes. you go back to the 80s, and the success that Pepperdine had is an impressive move of the post by Chase Jeter. Well, that's where Pepperdine's going to be beaten. If you don't play defense early, which means you win the position battle, you're going to get beaten down low. Pepperdine has already lost to two Pac-12 teams this season, losing at USC and at Cal, as Jotty Smith with the floater, giving Pepperdine the lead again. Chase Jeter took a, took a knee. And Keith Kimball working with Mike Cyphers and Tim Comer, a referee crew, stopping play. And Chase Jeter having some issues over there heading toward the bench. Sure, that's what it is. Every man can sympathize with that. <laughs> him trying to do that and, because and 11 first round yep. draft picks that he's had but who else was it who was the number one guy that everybody who said they wanted to play with john shockman what i mean i get it. it when you remember watching that guy play he made everybody else better you can't have five so stars played for him at washington but look he's had the number one overall pick and markel fultz mm. nico mannion the pull up Brandon Roy, who was unbelievable. Brandon, Brandon Roy, if it wasn't for injuries, that guy's a Hall of Famer. He, he was unbelievable. Spencer Hawes, Isaiah Thomas, Nate Robinson, Justin Holiday, all these yep. players. Skyler Chavez missing the deep two, and it's cleared by Ira Lee checking in for Chase Jeter. Off balance and missing everything was Jamal Baker, the transfer from Kentucky. Jamal Baker's been good for this program, too. The, the 11 to 1 assisted turnover ratio, but shooting 50 plus percent from the three. Again, added balance to an already talented and dangerous roster. Kobe Ross, the floater, and the first points for the junior, averaging almost 21 a game. Pepperdine up one. Ira Lee triple teamed and he's fouled. I have to say that the Pepperdine defense right now is what's impressed me the most. And they haven't looked this good all year, but you got to think they're bringing a little extra something. They've got a game plan that they trust in. They're not going to give up anything easy in the paint. You saw four or five defenders converge on the basketball once it got into the paint. First on Skylar Chavez. Ira Lee. Missing the free throw. 73% to start the season for the junior from L.A., who is the all-hustle energizer off the bench for Sean Miller. got to have him. He's a guy that will do the dirty work, whatever the coach asks him to do, and he's that hustle guy. 
that energy player who missed both free throws, and the rebound tipped out to Colby Ross. Max Hazard in the game for Arizona, grad transfer from UC Irvine. Also in is Stone Gettings, a transfer from Cornell. Look behind the line and a three missing from Kessler Edwards and Ira Lee the rebound. Daryl Polk Jr., a sophomore from Long Beach, in for Pepperdine. Stone Gettings, the Malibu product against the team from Malibu, draws the foul. That was physical. That was really physical. You, you say sound the surprised because yeah, Malibu. Well, you say the Malibu product, you, you think he's like stand up paddle boarding or something all day. Look, he put his shoulder down, he cleared space. Got himself an opportunity at the rim. And the physicality, when you think about the different conferences, right? I think the Big Ten's known to be an ultra physical conference similar to the Big East. The Pac 12's never been known to be a physical conference. Yet the teams go back to Stanford in the late 90s, early 2000s, when they were ultra physical, they dominated the conference. You have talent, depth, and physicality. You're dangerous here. Stone Gettings hits both. You mean your UCLA teams weren't physical? Honestly, there are times, there are a lot of UCLA people that forgot I ever played there, and I understand why. <laughs> Colby Ross, the bucket for Pepperdine, as the Waves seesaw in front. But yes, we were not physical. We had a good tan, though. You're in Westwood, come on. Stone Gettings is bumped and a foul called against Cedric Altman of Pepperdine, the freshman's first. It's good ball movement so far, too. And I think that's what you have to be pleased with if you're Arizona. But what you're not pleased with is, is the, the Red Sea party down the lane and just an easy layup. That's a tough thing when you have a lot of youth. Uh, it's not just youth. I, I look at new players. We talk about the top six scorers who weren't on the roster last year. Communication suffers. So, so you still have to build upon that, and it hasn't really been tough sledding so far. Six games at home, and, and you've blown everybody out. Arizona turnover and a run out. Colby Ross is hammered by Ira Lee. Colby Ross will go to the line. So Ross, the junior from Aurora, Colorado, a two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Colorado. It was second in Pepperdine history in assists. And he had a streak earlier this season that dated back to last year of 32 yeah. consecutive makes from the line. And last game we were talking about how no one can shoot free throws anymore. Well, both of these teams can. Yeah, so I, it, it, it's just one of those things. It, it is so mental. It is about confidence. It's about rhythm. Sometimes for these guys, you need to find a routine, a routine that gives you rhythm, keeps you loose. Tough off-balance shot from Max Hazard, and a foul going for the rebound, and it's on Stone Gettings of Arizona. Arizona's starting to pressure a little bit, starting to push, and you still have to be patient. You've got so many bodies coming in and out of the game. All you have to do is have patient energy. That's it. You've got the athleticism. You have, you have all the pieces to win this game big, but at times it has to be patient persistence. Chase Jeter, Zeke Naji back in the game for the Wildcats. Here's the pull up at the foul line, spins out for Cedric Altman, but losing the rebound out of bounds was Arizona, and it's a Pepperdine ball. Pepperdine's been active. I mean, they're, they're playing like they're a team with a chip on their shoulder, and that's exactly what you have to be. Last year, Lorenzo Romar's first year, they had a 10-win improvement from the yeah. season before. They won 16 games last year, though they did, they did finish eighth in the WCC, but they won three games in Vegas at the WCC tournament before losing to Gonzaga in the semis. It, it's a process. I think we forget about that far too often. Josh Green to steal. Draws contact, counted, and one for the Aussie, Josh Green. And when I talk about the process, that, that's kind of year to year for a lot of these teams. It's year to year for Arizona when you think about the newcomers. You have to start that process over again. It helps to have guys that can go out and get buckets. They can just go out and make plays. You got Nico Maggi. You have Josh Green. Zeke's on another level. He, 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 I mean, we were talking to, we were talking to, 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 to Sean yesterday, and, and he just talked about how young he was. 
So just a kid, you know, 17 years old when he when he was coming in here. It's just, but but he was a bit of a late bloomer. He's got great energy. He's starting to fill out, but you don't score. You don't do the things. You don't shoot 80 percent from the field without having a good feel for the game. And to be that young and to understand the game that well, it's impressive. Stays with Pepperdine. Tied at 16. Pepperdine's hit six of their first 10. They've hit a couple of threes. Here's Johnny Smith out near midcourt. Colby Ross hits a three. Nine already for Ross. Well, in the scramble, Chase Jeter got stuck on Ross. Look out. Arizona, Josh Green back the other way. Trying to squeeze a thought in in five seconds as a dunk. <laughs> Pepperdine celebrate. They got a three, and all of a sudden it ends up at the other end. See, as Cameron Edwards with the hoop. We got a good flow to this game. This is one you might just sit back and enjoy. Is this like the pumpkin pie after the turkey on Thanksgiving? It's all about the whipped cream. Chase Jeter. And that's where they're beat. That's where Pepperdine has to play defense early. You got to win position. You win position, you got a chance. Fun one on Thanksgiving night in Anaheim. Quarters of the wooden legacy is a loose ball picked up by Chase Jeter. Here comes Arizona. Max Hazard throws it away and then reaches in and a foul on the grad transfer from UC Irvine. One point lead for Pepperdine. Just over 11 minutes to go first half. Coming up, our former colleague, yeah, an Arizona that. legend, joins us next. He looks the same, too. What happened to, to me? Simon says we get to play it next. Coaching <laughs> and now as an assistant with the Lakers. Good to see you. Man, Happy Thanksgiving. To, Happy Thanksgiving. Good to see you, brother. Well, what's it like to see your alma mater here 15 minutes from your front door? Man, it's really fun. Uh, I haven't seen a live Arizona basketball game in, in a couple years. Uh, but this group is really energetic. They play with great pace. Um, I've heard really good things about all the freshmen from uh, Zeke and Green and Mannion. And, uh, you know, Pepperdine's giving them all they can handle right now. But I really like uh, how this Arizona team is playing. Well, Miles, you, you know, you came up, you talked about a couple years away from the college game. You're now in the NBA game. How much has it changed now that you come back and you watch some of this? How much has it changed? Because a lot of the game is a little bit more like the overseas NBA game these days. Yeah, it's, it's different. Like, I, I still watch a bunch of college on TV yeah. when I can um, but it's just such a it's like two the NBA and college are two different worlds yeah. two different it's two completely different basketball games with um, you know the pace of play the physicality the athleticism in the NBA um, the coaching the number of sets run in the NBA it's 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 so different but I love watching the energy that the college guys play with the enthusiasm how hard they compete um, how important it is for them you know to to win for their school and their teammates it's it's super fun to watch. This is actually this and the NCAA tournament. That's two of my favorite weeks for for college basketball. Feast, Feast week and then um, the NCAA tournament is obviously two of the best times. Well, this is a tournament you got to work a, a number of years, us together down here in Anaheim. So you're very used to the Wooded Legacy. Yeah, uh, did this one a couple years. Really fun. I was when I was coming in with my son and my in-laws, and I was walking in like. And I live really close to this arena, but I hadn't been down here in about five or six years, and so much has changed just in the uh, the area of, of Disneyland. Miles, we talk about the success of the young freshmen. Give me a sense of the challenges in terms of getting these guys together to kind of build the chemistry that you need to win at a high level. Yeah, it, it's difficult because it's such a, a learning process as a freshman. Um, Sean Miller's a very detail-oriented coach. You know, puts in quite a few sets, but then the defensive concepts that you have to adjust to like I'm watching them ice ball screens yep. on the side that's new for a lot of high school guys coming in um, defense is new for a lot of high school guys <laughs> defense is new because playing hard guys, every play yeah. <laughs> these guys are stars at their high school and, and don't get me wrong some high schools demand it from their guys night in and night out but depending on the school or where they learn from in their high school they, they're not used to playing help side defense having to take charges uh, having physical yeah. blockouts all the time it's accountability having, in general. Account, yeah. having to run back on defense <laughs> as soon as uh, they see the flight of the ball to get back in transition and not give up layups or open threes to the other team so the leak out for dunks in the AU you don't see that yeah apparently no you don't, you don't see that quite, quite as much I don't know if Sean will handle that too well <laughs> 
what's it like to be with LeBron and Anthony Davis on a daily basis? <laughs> How did I know that was coming? Come on. <laughs> we, uh, America wants to know. You know, it's 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 truly amazing. LeBron, this is um, my second year being being a coach on the staff with LeBron being there, obviously, and and he's just a basketball savant. Yeah. The guy is the guy is unbelievable the way. He sees the game. He knows each and every team's plays um, before we can even walk through them. He he pretty much knows what's coming for that player, or even like you know ATOs that a team might run, or their system that they're going to implement each game. Um, the defensive coverages that we should do. Uh, special guy, special guy to be around. He's a great teammate. He's a really really good leader. Um, and the things that he's doing this year are just freakish like I can't believe the numbers that he's putting up playing point guard how well he's defending in year 17 uh, at such a high level I mean he's on the MVP pace and then now you add in Anthony Davis for us who is a top five player in the league and he is just a dominant force all over the court defensive end he is he's got to be first or second best player in the NBA on the defensive side and then you throw Anthony Davis the ball in the post or you put him in pick and rolls or he can ISO you at the top and break you down off the dribble he's a problem for everybody uh, every night and it's good that we have both of those guys on our team trust me oh, makes you a much better coach doesn't it Miles everybody wants to be that guy everybody wants to be LeBron but what does he do that we don't see that makes him that great uh, he's there to practice Practice early. He takes care of his body, um, and I think that's the biggest thing for him. And I've asked him about that, like the meticulous care that he takes care of his body with 15 to 20 minutes of just stretching before practice, doing it again after practice, the lifting, uh, the consistency in his lifting, um, in, in maintaining his strength during the season, uh, the importance of rest for him, uh, the importance of his diet and nutrition. And then the maintenance of his game. Yeah. You know, like he was filming Space Jam pretty much all summer. Yep. And he was sometimes having to work out because of the filming hours, like three in the morning or six in the morning or maybe 11 at night. But he didn't take the days off um, when he was supposed to be yeah. training. And that's what makes him arguably the best player to ever play yep. this game. Skyler Chavez hits a three and Pepperdine goes back on top. Second three for Chavez. All right, 1997. Is it hard for you to believe it's been that long since you won, you won that national championship? We saw you securing the ball there at the end. Man, it is because it was just kind of so surreal that we were able to win the championship. And the special group that we had with myself and Mike Bibby and Jason Terry and obviously led by the legendary coach Lute Olsen who you know made all of that possible by getting us to school there and being the great coach that that he is um, the time has passed and you know as I'm walking in the arena so many you know quite a few Arizona fans are here and and they're kind of thanking me for a national championship and it's like you know it's it's a special memory in the hearts of everybody in in the city of Tucson and we have the best fans in college basketball and uh, they they never forget and that's what makes it makes it really such a special place all of these guys on the floor, even the walk-ons, think they're going pro, right? That's just the reality of it. Look, I, I did the same thing, and I had to learn. I had to learn eventually. I found humility. But they all want to go pro. What are you looking for that's beneath the surface? We see talent. You see length. You see athleticism. You see an ability to do something. But, but what's beneath the surface that you're looking for at the next level? A guy who can play his role. Right. So there's very few stars in the league. Yeah. Um, like there's probably seven to ten franchise players okay and then there's probably you know there's obviously 20 to 24 all-stars every year but then the rest of the league over 400 some players play a specific role nearly each and every night so if you're a point guard you know if you oh gosh wow. sorry <laughs> I like him, <laughs> I, like him. I think he's gonna have a role in the NBA yeah, yeah right <laughs> I think, that's his role, I think he's all right. <laughs> that's why you're a coach. You can see that. <laughs> that one's easy to find. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Five seconds, and that's all it takes to get down the floor. Who am I kidding? Three. 27 on the shot clock. One Holy more look. Smoke. Josh Green. That's his second tonight. Well, it's great to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank your wife, Christy, again for. Thanksgiving meal earlier today. No problem. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Have a great call great the rest of the you. tournament. Miles Simon, the Arizona legend, is number 34, retired. Hangs for the Raptors at McHale. His cat's in a tight one. That's true. Come on, man. I mean, jeez. Josh Green missing at the line. Rebound, Jody Smith. Our thanks again for Miles yeah. Simon joining us.
here at courtside. Back to the game, though, this Pepperdine team has been able to execute. And when I say execute, it's, it's not just execute an offense. It's execute a game plan. And when you execute a game plan, you grow in confidence throughout the course of the game. And, and you also feel good if you're that man. They're 11 of 16 from the floor. And a steal off the inbound. Nico Mannion attacks. Mm. Falls off. Josh Green can't control the rebound. And Pepperdine comes away with it. Shot sent back by Zeke Naji. And the follow and the roll for Cameron Edwards. I'm telling you, confident teams create their own luck. You don't make your own luck if you're not, a, you're not confident. You got to be confident to make your own luck. And Pepperdine has, has gotten a few broken plays that have gone their way. And they're controlling this game. Look at that. How about the spin and Zeke Nanji with a second bucket? just the spin with the body. It was the, the little English he put on the ball to, to give it a chance. And that's a guy that's 6'11", 240. Yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> Deep three from Jan Zedek. The son of former UCLA Bruin and national champion George Zedek. He was a freshman. Lorenzo Romar was an assistant at UCLA at the time. George Zedek played for Jim Herrick in that 95 championship for UCLA. I wish I had that on my resume. Like my resume right now. You played don't, at UCLA. Don't put me up against anybody. Like don't put me next to anybody who had a really successful career. Because my resume is like, yeah, he played at Penn State, played at, played at UCLA. But I, that national champion on your resume is huge. That's what everybody, every season aspires to and only one team can do it. That's special, man. It's more special for those of us who don't have one. Skyler Chavez blocked by Zeke Naji. Jamal Baker. Missing a three. Zeke Naji on the offensive glass. Naji powers his way back up. And still down, grimacing is Cameron Edwards, who ankle. was clutching that right ankle. Zeke Naji did the one thing you're not supposed to do, right? He put it on the floor. Bring the ball down. He did. He brought the ball down, but he got so low. Like, the problem is big guys stand up and put the ball on the floor. Watch how low Zeke Naji gets. He gets down with it. That's a power dribble. Everybody says take a power dribble, and they, they dribble it just, just really softly, and they get stolen. See the ankle? Yeah, a little right ankle. Edwards is, seems to be walking it off. You and I would be carted off the floor. <laughs> Great cut. And a foul will send Kessler Edwards to the line. You see, Defensively, if you're Arizona, you've Arizona, given up some easy baskets, right? Pepperdine's playing with a ton of confidence. And you start to waver when it comes to your principles. You start to follow the basketball. You lose sight of your man, you get back cut. This is one of those tests for a young team. And, and Sean Miller, I have a lot to talk about at halftime. Second on Nico Mannion. And Kessler Edwards, who's the younger brother of Cameron, hits the first. And Sean Miller pulling Mannion with the two fouls and Max Hazard coming back. There are times where you let a young guy go with two fouls because you need to learn. As a coach, you need to learn how he plays with two fouls. You know, because there are some guys that they, they play so passive not to get that second foul that they're actually a liability on the floor. So there will be times, maybe not in this game, until they get control. Josh Green to miss. Zeke Naji on the weak side and a foul against Pepperdine with Arizona in the bonus. Naji going to the line. Lorenzo Romar not happy with the call. All right, I get it. You know, Zedek had position, but if you don't jump, you can take the ball from somebody. You, you got to elevate. You can't just hold your ground and expect to get that call. Just elevate up. The First on Jan Zedek. The contact will force the official to call. So Zeke Naji not only an 80% shooter from the floor, yes. an 81% foul shooter as well, and already a two-time Pac-12 freshman of the week. And there's a lot of really good freshmen yeah. in the Pac-12 well, this think year. You, I think you can get used to that release coming out. He now has really, eight. But it's the energy more so than anything else. He, he's, got a good, he's got a good feel for the game. He understands. He's got good instincts. But ultimately, he plays so hard. And everybody plays hard. I'm using air quotes. Everybody plays hard. 
But then there's that guy with the motor that you go, yeah, he's on another level. That's Zeke Naji. Cedric Altman travel. And it goes back to the Wildcats. I still think if you're Lorenzo Romar, you feel good about where you're at. And it's not just because you're down one. It's because you've been able to get what you want. You've gotten good looks. You've gotten second chance opportunities. You've been active on the offensive class. I think they got to be careful defensively. Defensively, you can't give up second chance points. And they've had nine turnovers. Pepperdine so far. Chase Jeter trying the reverse. Here comes Pepperdine and Colby Ross. Pull up three in transition. Oh, wow. Colby Ross. He has 14. What that pull up three in transition? He was sniffing it from half court. You could see him lining up his steps. And when you line up your steps, you get your own rhythm. That's Hazard. Tough shot off balance. That's a deep two. Again, it's confusing. We have four yeah. three-point lines out there. It's the third ring. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not confusing at all, except for the end of last game. <laughs> I told you, you didn't listen to me. <laughs> it would not be the first time. It's all right. Nobody listens to me in my own house either. I like watching him. He, like, he's lining it up, lining it up. He gets his feet set. That's not an easy shot. Stevie Nash used to do that, right? I don't know if people call him Stevie Nash anymore. Steve Nash, time MVP Steve Nash, used to do that full speed and transition stop on a dime pull up from three. It's not an easy shot. Cedric Altman missing from the corner. And it's over the top of the backboard, out of bounds to Arizona. We are knotted at 35 quarterfinals of the Wooden Legacy in Southern California. Coming up in the E-Trade Halftime Report, and Arizona's blown everybody out so yeah. far, John. They're 6-0, and winning by an average of over 30 points per game, and they're tied late in the first half with Pepperdine. Well, first, you've got to give Pepperdine and Lorenzo Romar credit. Uh, clearly, Lorenzo Romo, Romar has scouted his team. He knows Sean Miller very well. Uh, but but the issue is, this is a team, first time they've had to play a game away from home. Uh, it's, a, it's a home where they dominate. Really, 53 and one or something like that in the last 54 games at home. Jamal Baker, open three. First points for the sophomore. I should say last, uh, last non-conference, 54 non-conference games. But, you know, and I, I like that when you're scheduling. I mean, people say you got to play somebody, you got to challenge it. You also have to build a team. And this is a team that's going to be better in March than they are right now. Cameron Edwards missing a three. Here comes Jamal Baker for U of A. Once these guys get familiar with one another, figure each other out, Chase Jeter inside. You know what? That's good defense, though. I'm watching Pepperdine's position defensively. You may just have to live with that if you're Lorenzo Romar. You look at you, you almost got beat by letting the ball in the post. Mm, tough one. Largest lead for the Wildcats. Arizona foul. And it's on Chase Jeter, his second. I've, I've been around teams, I've covered teams that say, we're going to play the post as if the catch is a point. So when you're preparing for a team, if they catch the ball on the block, that's two points for them. It's a great way to prepare, and it teaches you how to play defense early. And when I say defense early, I say this a lot. It means win the position battle. If you win the position battle, force the catch further from the basket, you still have a chance against, uh, really, a team that you're just not going to be able to compete with down low. One more for Colby Ross. He has 17 now, or rather 16 here in the first half. And it's a three-point game in favor of Arizona. And Nico Mannion on the bench with those two fouls. That, that's an issue because he hasn't really been able to get it going yet today. Travel on Dylan Smith. That, that is, I mean, I, I love to do this, the, the Paycom Wooden Legacy. Be quick, but don't hurry. Uh, and, and that's a great one. Look. When you're playing, when you're a freshman and you hear that, you're like, yeah, 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 right? And I'm sure everybody that played for John Wooden probably said that at some point or another. But as you get older, you go, gosh, that makes so much sense. And it's universal. A lot of those things are universal. It's not just college basketball. It's life. The defense. With Better the left offense. hand, Cameron Edwards. One point game again.
Stone Gettings lines it up. Way off on the three. Pepperdine has a chance to take the lead. Johnny Smith steps into a three. Wow. And Pepperdine's on top. And how many times have I said one of the challenges with it with a young group or a new group is communication defensively and that's been a problem for Arizona. It's identifying shooters. It's getting back in transition and all five finding the man because at times two guys have gone with one. Pepperdine six of 12 from three. They've scored seven straight to take the lead. Max Hazard drops it off for Zeke Naji and a tie up underneath. Pepperdine ball with a minute 23 left in a half. There's just no space. Uh, you, you go to the basket, it, it's got to be a, a baseline drive, baseline drift. You, you got to get the ball out of there. There's no room in the paint. And again, communication defensively. You've got to identify all shooters. That's just too easy. Pepperdine shooting 60% overall from the floor. Kessler Edwards missing a three. Zeke Naji the rebound. Six rebounds for Naji. Yeah, Pepperdine's done a good job in defensive transition. That's going to be an offensive foul on Zeke Naji. And it's his first. That's probably the biggest threat. You know, this Arizona team, they have so many weapons, they all get out and run. If you don't get back and stop in transition, it's going to be a long night. Pepperdine's done a great job of that, forcing this into a half-court game. Except when Josh Green's just gone the length of the floor and thrown it down in three seconds. He had two of them. Johnny Smith slow to get to his feet for Pepperdine. Well, Zeke Naji landed on him. I go back to it. The common folk, they're just you don't get up from it. And 6'11", 240 falling. Yeah, and, and when I say common folk, I'm talking about you and I. Like, we forget, like, the, the different levels, you know, to play high school basketball, to come up to the college level, huge jump, especially the major Division I level. The next jump is even bigger because you, you just can't have flaws. Skyler Chavez had a look at a three and the loose ball. Still fighting for it. Josh Green spikes it off Cameron Edwards, and it's an Arizona ball. Winning plays. Uh, you need your guys to make those winning plays, especially when things are down. That's a winning play. Those are the things that, that give you confidence. Too. You, when the game is sloppy, right now it's a little sloppy for Arizona. Offensive timing, some of the timing on their sets, some of the timing on their screens has been a little off. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Nico Mannion hasn't really gotten it going in this game. But you still have to make winning plays. Three turnovers the last four possessions. Josh Green spinning inside. How about making a play? Yeah. He leads Arizona with 11. We're tied, and Pepperdine can play for the last shot of the half. This has been fun, man. Great flow to this game. Back and Great forth. Flow. Kobe Ross. The high arcing teardrop. Jamal Baker the rebound. Baker. Too late. And we are tied at halftime. Pepperdine hanging in there with number 14, Arizona. Yeah, Pepperdine did a lot of things really well, particularly knocking down shots. They found the open man, found confidence, and that confidence has transitioned to the defensive end where they've gotten the job done, even though they gave up 42 points. It's been a tight first half. Neither team had a lead larger than five. Colby Ross with 16 lead all scorers for Pepperdine. Tied at the half. Coming up, the E-Trade Halftime Report. Foot and Legacy is part of Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, and a good one to wrap up day one in Southern California. Number 14, Arizona and Pepperdine tied at 42, getting ready to start the second half at the Anaheim Arena, along with former UCLA Bruin John Crispin. Roxy Burns with you, and look, we know Arizona's talented and good, yeah. but how about the first half of Colby Ross for Pepperdine? I tell you, just a stone-cold killer. He, he's not afraid of anything, and I think that's what makes you so dangerous. We, we know what he can do. We've seen it. I mean, this is a guy that can score 25, 30 points on any given night, but you don't expect him to do this against an Arizona team that has the kind of length that they have, that has the kind of bodies that they can throw out you. And usually when there's a mouse in the house, it's a big guy posting up a guard. 
just ridiculous what he's been able to do in the first half. He's got 16 points. He's also got four assists. That's the thing. He's also sharing the ball. And Josh Green, you, know, you talk about freshmen that just seem to have a knack for the game. A knack for finding opportunities to impact the basketball game. He's great in transition. Gets out and runs those lanes really well. And they're going to need more transition opportunities if they want to take control of this basketball game because the half-court defense, even though they've given up 42 points, talking about Pepperdine, they've been adequate. Here are the first half numbers. And Colby Ross leading all scorers in the game. Neither team led by more than five points in the first half. It was tight, back and forth. Pepperdine shooting the ball extremely well, hitting six threes in the first half, 54% overall from the floor. They had nine turnovers in the first half that really hurt them. For Arizona, Wildcats led by Green's 11. Wildcats shot 52% themselves. And rebounds surprisingly even, considering Arizona is one of the better rebounding teams in America. Good double. Good double led to a travel. The Edwards. A pair of Edwards and Edwards came in together and that, that's the thing like that is out of out of a halftime this is what we're going to do if he gets the ball down though hard double they executed got the turnover all 42 pepper nine points coming from their starters and a whistle and off the ball and it's against Pepperdine and it's on Kessler Edwards his third foul just 22 seconds into the second half yeah, and that's the thing you, you need to, to be careful with foul trouble because if you're Pepperdine, you got to stay aggressive. You, you've got to continue to be the aggressor, and that's what made them so successful in the first half. And you talk about those turnovers that kind of hurt them. A lot of those turnovers were aggressive turnovers. So, so in a way, if, I, if I'm Lorenzo Robo, I can live with some of those turnovers so long as they're aggressive turnovers. Looking for Zeke Naji, posting up out of the double team. Good scramble defensively. Dylan Smith. Missing a corner three, Johnny Smith the rebound for the Waves. That was a great defensive possession for Pepperdine. The floater. Ooh. And the tip in, the follow from Kessler Edwards. Nico Mannion knocks it down in a three. That's, that's a more important basket than you have any idea. You've got to get Nico Mannion into this game. He's got to be able to impact this basketball game. When the ball's in his hands, defense has to pay attention to him, particularly with his ability to knock down those, peri those perimeter jump shots in transition. He picked up two fouls with about seven minutes to go in the first half as Cameron Edwards missing a three, cleared by Dylan Smith. And then Sean Miller sitting Mannion for the rest of the first half. Mannion. That one too strong, and the rebound tip free to Skylar Chavez for the Waves. Jotty Smith spinning. How about that move from Jotty Smith? Just good balance, good poise. But, but what I liked is their transition flowed right into secondary. Their secondary created an opportunity. Three guys on the opposite side of the floor. They didn't race to the basketball. There's good patience. Drop off. Mannion feeding a cutting chase. Jeter. Mannion had a layup, but instead he, he got his teammate an even easier one. And a foul on Dylan Smith of Arizona, his first. When this game gets rolling, it's, it's been really good. And this is just a one-on-one -on -one ISO because the three guys on the opposite side of the floor were patient enough to stay away. And then Nico probably could have gone up for a layup and instead finds Chase Jeter for a chippy. And this is a young Pepperdine team that has, only has one scholarship senior in Cameron Edwards. Plus, they're down two key players as Keith Smith, the Oregon transfer, is out with a knee injury. And also out is Andre Ball. He's out for the season for Pepperdine and a travel against Skylar Chavez. I actually think what makes them dangerous is the same five, six, maybe seven guys are going to play the bulk of the minutes. That makes you tougher because you, you just kind of maintain rhythm throughout the game where, where Sean Miller can go eight, nine, ten deep. Zeke Naji. Wow. That's a two, a deep corner two. And again with the confusing four and three point lines. And that's a confidence builder. He shoots 80% from, from the field, but that's good ball movement. Everybody got involved. And a whistle as Arizona trying to break out. 
And a foul called against Pepperdine. And it's on Colby Ross, his second. All right, so earlier in the, in the game, probably, I think it was probably our open, I, I talked about how this team in some ways reminds me of that Anthony Davis Kentucky team, not, not just because of their ability, but because of their willingness to share. You don't see that a lot. They, they defer to one another quite a bit, and I think that's what makes them so dangerous. Timeout Pepperdine. Lorenzo Romar in the waves, hanging in with number 14, Arizona. Is in the Hall of Fame as both a player and a coach. The rubber band man. <laughs> There's the career record for John Wooden. And as Bill Walton likes to tell me, John, yes, only two times when I played at UCLA, as paraphrasing Bill here, did he ever mention the opposing team? Both those yes. times we lost. Yes. <laughs> we got a book uh, in our swag called Quotable Wooden because he was one of the most quotable coaches of all time. And, and I love this one. It says, the athlete who says that something cannot be done should never interrupt the one who is doing it. I absolutely love John Wooden quotes. Well, Chase Jeter was just interrupted because he was fouled. And he'll go to the line. I was, Fouls on I was Cameron Edwards is second. By the way, if you ever want to really get a kick out of Bill Walton, Watch a game Bill Walton did on Synergy and only watch the clips because you catch comments out of context and it is probably the most remarkable Why thing. Why would I want to watch that when it's in my nightmares? It, it is fan Think of Synergy clips, just the offensive makes, where you just pop into the middle of a Bill Walton conversation. Absolutely priceless. I try to roll oh. from that. Wow! Speaking of trying to run from something, Pepperdine watching Zignaggi go over the top. Uh, foul shot block out. That just can't happen. That, that means that you walk to the rim. You didn't walk back into the guy you need to be boxing out. Arizona's matched their largest lead, but now Jotty Smith with an answer for the Waves. I was interested to see if this Pepperdine team could keep it up physically because you are really relying upon a few guys to play significant minutes and, and fight bigger bodies. Extra pass to Nico Mannion. Rattles out the three, and the rebound batted around, and Pepperdine has it, and Jody Smith. Good fight for Pepperdine. I mean, they are so outmatched in terms of rebounding, yet they're fighting hard. Guards have to contribute. Up and under, the leaner, and it goes for Kessler Edwards. One point game. Nico Mannion darts back the other way. Wow. We've, and a timeout for Sean Miller. We've got to get another look at that because he put a spin on that ball. He knew exactly what his angle was, had to get it at a certain height to get it over the defender. Wow. Look, foul shot box out. I, I don't know what happened. Edwards just missed the body. <laughs> and Zeke Dodgy does what he does. And watch the English. Extends with the left hand, but puts a little spin on it. A little spin on it. Light kiss. Arizona only up three, though. Pepperdine balling. Carolina at the Dean Dome. Two great nights of hoops and a pair of Sonic blockbusters on ESPN and the ESPN app. Does it change every year? Is it Big Ten ACC, then the ACC Big Ten? It should be whoever won it gets their name listed first. If you get the edge that particular year, then yeah. the next year. The next year you own it, right? The cycle's over. Good execution. They, they got a good look on, on that tight curl and feed the post. Cameron Edwards the miss. Arizona up three. Pepperdine has hung in there all night. Dylan Smith on the baseline. He's got that mid-range game, and, and it's, it's not, it's still there. It's a bit of a lost art, but it's there. Everybody likes to shoot layups or threes, but that mid-range game's gonna be there, especially if you have that elevation advantage. Arizona's match their largest lead. Here comes Josh Green for the Cats. Look out. And a reach in and a foul. Mm. And it's on Jody Smith, his second. And Arizona will head to the line. Josh Green's one of those guys where you just kind of see that head of steam come your way. All you can do is swipe at the ball. You're not taking a charge on that guy. He does not skip leg day. <laughs> like I do. <laughs> yes. Walking doesn't count. But I walked a lot this week already. You did, you in Disneyland, I know. This was absolutely clean. That was 
Sometimes like, it's really hard. We, we like we love to criticize officials, but it's almost like an anticipated call, right? You know, you just you, you just assume it's going to be a foul. You barely see it. Some of the hardest calls are the ones that are obvious, right? Largest lead of the night for Arizona. And again, keep in mind, they're 6-0, winning by an average of 30 points a game, is burying a three, was Kessler Edwards. How many times has Pepperdine had an answer? It tells you a lot about the, the comfort and the confidence of this team. And I, I go back to trusting the game plan. I, I think they have confidence in doing what they're told to do. Strip from Chase Jeter. Good hands for the Waves. Backside guard was there just a second late, but it allowed defense to corral that basketball. In a reach in as Colby Ross was going up, it's on Josh Green, his first. A lot of confidence on this floor. That, that's the NBA three-point line. We're talking about the, the four three-point lines. Well, that was the furthest. And just a second late, but being there allows your other defenders. Edwards comes over and strips the basketball. A lot of things. They're doubling the post, and that backside guard has to drop fast. This is a highly skilled team in Pepperdine as the Waves, 40% three-point shooting team. They're the number one free-throw shooting team in America at 86%. That's ridiculous. That's a team number. That's ridiculous. We talked about Penn, 64% from the, from the free-throw line. This is a team that coming into tonight, 85.6%, number one in America. They've shot 80% or better from the line in every game this season. And they remain perfect tonight. It's been impressive. Honestly, Pepperdine has really impressed me. Interesting to see how, how deep into the bench Lorenzo Romar can go if need be. A foul trouble hasn't really been too much of a problem. And every time you think Arizona may create some separation, Pepperdine like comes now. right back. Okay, Josh Let's Green the hits the three, yep. makes it a four point game. 15 for Green which leads Arizona. Tough shot with Najee affecting, but Pepperdine keeps it alive. Johnny Smith to the bucket. Season high 11 for the junior from Oakland. It, it was energy that answered. That's what it was. It, it was that second chance energy keeping things alive. Put the Arizona defense in a scramble mode. You're able to get to the basket. Skip to Josh Green. Wow. Three. Wow. Yeah, he's good. Five point lead. Colby Ross. Corner three. Rims off from Cameron Edwards. Arizona clears. Again, Josh Green. A three. Hits another one. Arizona's up eight. You, you know, you, you have to credit Nico Mannion, too. We, we don't do this enough. There are guys on the floor that recognize the hot hand. Usually they're experienced, right? Usually they're, they're second, third, fourth year players. Nico Mannion's done a great job there in transition. Fine, it's just great backside play, throw over the top. You got the size to throw over the top, you got to do it. Like I said, Nico Mannion felt it. That's a guy that has feel for the game. He, he can control tempo, he can control pace, he can get the right guy the ball. And then after the bucket, there was a foul for a push on Cameron Edwards. Nico Mannion missing the three, Ira Lee keeping it alive. So the foul against Pepperdine gives Arizona the possession after the made three. And this is where Arizona has to just start to pull away. And they can do it by starting to push tempo, but they need to get stops. That's the problem. They haven't gotten stops. And this is an Arizona team that plays a lot quicker, more tempo to Sean yeah. Miller's group this year. Yeah, well, when you got a guy like Nico handling the ball, you, you can trust him to play with more tempo and pace. Out of bounds, and Arizona gives it back to Pepperdine. And Sean Miller's just saying, hey, make the easy pass. Don't need to go over the top. A simple dump down. That gets the job done. Especially if you're able to get through two defenders. That means somebody is left not covering a man. It's going to lead to a scramble. And with the double in the post, if you just get a single coverage in the post, it, your post players have been able to have their way in single coverage. Colby Ross creates space. And the fadeaway rattles out. It was all the way down and popped out. 
And then a foul going for the rebound. It's on Pepperdine. Arizona threatening to blow this one open now. Yeah, Josh Green's gotten it rolling. He really has gotten it going. You got to credit teammates, though. Teammates do a great job of feeling when someone's got it going and you get them the basketball. The little step back jumper, it's a higher percentage shot than you realize. That's a rhythm jumper. Talk about positive body language. Bench has all sorts of stuff going on. Got it all right now. A young career high of 21. He scored the Wildcats last 10. He's made three threes here in the second half. And he got a flopping. He uh, just did get a warning. warning. So the first warning handed out to Arizona for a flop. You didn't bring it up because you didn't want me to rant about it. Uh, I get it. The next one becomes a class B technical one shot. Skyler Chavez breaks it up and a steal for Pepperdine. Pepperdine down eight. They've kept it close all night. They've led numerous occasions. And now in a danger zone here. And a foul the perimeter against Arizona. It's on Stone Gettings for a block, his second. I really got to give Pepperdine credit with, with their movement offensively. You know, teams don't set as many screens anymore, but it's more of that, like, have your action get in their way. That's a good screen, and they've got that going on right now. Colby Ross fumbled it away. Stone Gettings spins in the key. Gettings, it's his first field goal tonight. It's a big time move though. And it's a 10 point game. You know, on the on the ball screen, two guys go with Nico Mannion, he pops, he gets a, gets a bit of a, a lame closeout and is able to attack. Corner three, short, but the rebound falls to Kessler Edwards. Jamal Baker knocks it away. Baker to the bucket, it finishes. Arizona taking control, a 10-0 run. Jamal Baker, that, that's fundamental. It really is, it's fundamental. It's C-man, C-ball. It, defense has to make reads just like offense has to make reads. And that's exactly what Jamal Baker did. He read it, he was a safety. He's covering two guys with one. The best defensive teams have multiple players that can cover two players with one. Go back to Golden State in their heyday. It wasn't just the offense. It was the fact that Draymond Green could cover two with one. Andre Iguodala. Andre Iguodala could cover two with one. And it's not the athletic ability. It's not trying hard. It's being crafty enough to know how to bait a guy into a pass, to stop the basketball yet not give up a three. Yesterday, UCF practicing a scramble offensive drill where you put the defense in a scramble mode, the pass comes out, one defender has to cover two, shooting a three. So you have to make a read. Understanding how to play against one defender, making sure you get a good look. Arizona's opened up a 12-point lead, and the winner of our game tomorrow night will play Penn in the second semifinal. Earlier tomorrow on ESPN2, Long Beach State and Wake Forest. As Eric Rothman and former Arizona Wildcat Corey Williams on the call of that one as Long Beach State rallied from 17 down to come back and beat Wake. They'll, or rather to beat Providence, they'll take on Wake tomorrow. And loser of our game will take on UCF also here tomorrow in day two of the Wooden Legacy at the Anaheim Arena. Corey Williams try, trying to give our good friend Sean Farnham great UCLA, great status last night. He did. He, he did. He tried. And speaking I, of, well, it was great. The, the, the tribute, the yes. video tribute they had. That was fantastic. Sean Farnham, Farnham, I'm sure you're watching because you're a junkie like we are. Uh, fantastic job narrating that. I'm sure you did the illustrations too. And a foul as Ira Lee will send Cameron Edwards to the line. That's the second on Ira Lee. Cameron Edwards, who is an 81% foul shooter. See, he struggles for Pepperdine, 81%. Yeah. Because he's below the team average. How dare he. All right, so I really, you'd say, he plays hard, right? No question. Plays hard. Josh Green plays hard. Yep. Zeke Naji plays hard. And I'm not just talking like, yeah, he sweats. Like, these guys get after it. They're physical. 
and I can tell you that with the skill set that they have as they get better and better as a team, the physicality is what will be what separates them in the Pac-12. Josh Green goes crashing and an offensive foul. The second on Green. But the, the difference for Arizona this year, and look, last year was such a tough year, yeah. right, for Arizona dealing with everything they had to deal with. And just the talent level wasn't what we expect from an Arizona team. And, and Sean Miller had an inner struggle about how to coach the team last year. And the recruiting, you know, the recruits you bring in, that was an issue. You lost some guys. That, yeah, that, that was an issue. This is, a, this is a new group. This is a really unique group, too. But the point I'm getting at is he's got the depth now. Last yeah. year, look, if a guy didn't play hard, Sean was stuck. He had to play him. Because yeah, accountability is an issue. He, he didn't have the depth and the talent on the roster to be able to overcome that. This year, you're not playing hard. You're yeah. sitting because Arizona goes 10-11 deep. I mean, can you, yeah, look, coaching's one that uh, they're, they're going to get Baker on the foul. Coaching's one thing. You know, think about parenting. If you can't hold it, hold your child accountable, how do you parent? Well, it's the same thing as a coach, right? You know, playing time is the ultimate trump card. It's the ultimate trump card. You're the head coach. You control playing time. Playing time for these guys is absolutely everything in their lives. Trust me, I've been there, and I wasn't even that good. You know, you've got some potential one-and-done type guys. Playing time is the trump card, so they have to play up to a certain level. And look, Sean Miller teams aren't soft. They're not. And this is a group, I, I really do feel like this is a, a, a special group, but, but you still have to have a level of patience with this group. They're still young. All five starters for Pepperdine now in double figures as Skylar Chavez goes three for three from the line, and Pepperdine remains perfect at the strike. They are 13 for 13. And they've closed to within seven after getting down 12. And they go inside to Zeke Naji and a whistle and a walk. See, see, to me, I'm looking at that. Freedom of movement, that's an automatic whistle. You get an arm ball into a driver, arm bar, excuse me, into a driver, that's an automatic foul call. Zeke Naji, in some way, almost had to push off to create space. And the contact with the defender is what led to the travel. Sometimes I think we forget to call that for bigs. Guards get them all the time, but bigs don't. It's good scramble, good defensive scramble. Skylar Chavez, three! Backside, the backside of that defense, they did everything right. But instead of sticking with the scramble, they allowed that extra pass to Chavez, and he was able to knock down the three. That's where a young defense, you can see it peppered out on a nice little 8-0 run right now. Young defense has to stick with the play until you secure the rebound. Great ball movement. Almost, almost a perfect defensive here. Here comes the help. There's the help. Everything's great. Backside help. Here's the scramble. Everything's good. Now you got to get out of the scramble, get all the way to the opposite side. They just didn't complete the play. That'll be a great teaching point for Sean Miller to say, look, guys, we did everything right except finish the play. Four-point game now as Pepperdine eight straight. They were down 12. And the Waves making another push back to hang in there yeah. with Arizona. Confidence. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, confidence, and then there's that scary fearlessness, right? Like, think of the NCAA tournament. You're a 16 seed playing a one. I'm sorry, that 16 team's dangerous, and they're getting more dangerous year in, year out, now that they saw UMBC. Canyon as he was inside the third three-point yeah, whatever. Line. That's the one we're playing. <laughs> the, you didn't believe the me. Whitest I'm still of the going white back one. to that's that. What yes, we're going there like. we go. The I, fresh tape on the floor, that's what it is. But we, we, have to, we have to remind people, though. End From of game the, one End of the tonight. UCF Penn game, down three, don't foul, quarter three, so we thought foot was on the line. Old three-point line, it would have been a three. But the confusion with the four three-point lines may be factored in. Yeah. Johnny Smith, a three! Wow. Pepperdine's feeling it. They're not going away. Not at all. And, and I can say, the physicality of the game, they've answered the physicality as well. And Pepperdine has not gotten a single point from their bench tonight. Good nice footwork. move inside from Chase Jeter, who has a season high 10. Just good sit down, good patience. You've got the length and athleticism to elevate her over top anybody on this Pepperdine defense. You just have to have the patience and poise to do so. 
Why not? Long three. Too strong from Colby Ross, but an offensive board for the Waves. The Everett's brothers playing catch inside. Cameron Edwards a three. There's a one reason. point game. There's a reason why Arizona defenders are going for every single pump fake because it seems like every shot that goes up is going in. Ten threes for Pepperdine. It was an Arizona 12 point lead. It's down to one. Inside to Zeke Naji. And he is clobbered. will head to the line. 7.05 to go, and John, it's a one-point game. I think at some point, and a lot of Arizona fans in here are waiting for shots to stop falling for Pepperdine, but it ain't happening. I mean, they're shooting as if they have nothing to lose. They've answered the physicality. They've answered with knockdown shots. Sort of, right? All five starters yeah, right, double right, figures. It's balanced going sort of. You're not having any bench involved. I, I, I guess that's a problem, but they're finding a way. They've had an answer for everything Arizona's thrown at them. 15-4 run for Pepperdine from down 12 to within one. Our game is featured. 18 lead changes, wow. eight ties. Zeke Naji to miss. Now two of three at the line. 12 points for Naji tonight. You know, I talk a lot about body language. The body language hasn't been bad for Arizona, but it's been better for Pepperdine. And there's something about that. You know, it's it becomes infectious, right? When you start to see your teammates knock down shots and the bench rises up off their feet, it, it, it helps the energy. Jotty Smith had a good look. Also helps the ex execution. That was a great screen read and curl. Pepperdine takes it right back. Cameron Edwards ties the game. Pepperdine just will not go away. Dylan Smith attacks and will get to the line as the senior of the transfer from North Carolina, Asheville, will get to the strike. And this is where Arizona's just got to be better. Nico, man, you, you got to have more of, of a sense of where guys are at. You're pushing the ball. You've got numbers. You do have to look ahead, but you also have to be aware of who's behind. And sometimes that is up to your teammates. Teammates got to yell. Oh, I'm saying this like Nico doesn't know. He knows. Fourth foul on Kessler Edwards with 629 to play. So he'll head to the bench. Well, and you look at that stat, all five starters, double figures, but no one else. So let's see if they can get production. And production doesn't have to be points. Production just has to be contribution in any possible way. Here's Colby Ross. The quickness to get up the floor. Skylar Chavez for the lead. It rattles in, and Pepperdine, their first lead since they were ahead, 46-45. 17 for Skylar Chavez. Josh Green answers for Arizona. This has just been. Look, you and I can just shut up for the rest of the game, and I think everybody would enjoy it. This has been a great game. Good flow back and forth. Answer and another answer. This is so fun tonight, this game. I'm thankful for this game. Yes, I am. And a block against Arizona will put Pepperdine at the line as the Waves are in the bonus. Arizona Second on Zeke Nachi. I mean, it's Kobe Ross just getting downhill. Everybody talks about what getting downhill is, right? <laughs> getting downhill is just driving the basketball, pretty much. And they get an open look. And this is Zeke Nachi. Good job just finding an open shooter. And it happens to be Josh Green, who's been feeling it here in the second half. 24 for Green. He's four of five from three. Previous young career best was 20 in an Arizona blowout over Illinois. There's been such a concern at giving up layups in the post if you're Pepperdine's defense. So the presence of mind of a young Zeke Naji to find open shooters when, when you're being converged upon, that you have to look at those things and say that's a good play. You brought up something earlier, and is there something to that, that Arizona's going on the road for the first yes, time and playing outside of McHale Center? Outside of McHale Center, but just outside of the routine. I mean, this is the first time they've had to get out of the routine, and you know, there's a lot of different things, right? Your, your whole prep is different. 
you, your whole, the whole feel of the game, the atmosphere here is different. We have, we have a good crowd from Arizona here, but it's not the McHale Center. I can tell you that, I played there. It didn't fare well. Not many teams do. Yeah. Tied at 79, approaching 5.20 to go. Nico Mannion off balance and Pepperdine with the rebound. Yeah. Cameron Edwards challenged and a strong finish over Chase Jeter. Timeout, Arizona, 4.58 to play. And Pepperdine is up two on number 14, Arizona. Roxy, who's been the aggressor? Pepperdine. Pepperdine. The aggressor, I would say, the aggressor always wins. Well, well, truthfully, the aggressor usually always wins. And Pepperdine right now is putting their head down and attacking. They're doing it on both ends. On the defensive end, they're attacking the basketball. If you throw the ball in the paint, they're doubling hard, and they're going to make somebody else beat you. They're not going to let Zeke Naji shoot layups. And then out of a double team, you know, Kobe Ross, he's getting double team. He throws back, and he trusts the teammate to go make a play, but they do it by attacking the basket. Saturday at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Heisman hopeful Joe Burrow. The number two LSU look to stay perfect against Texas A&M. In Death Valley, the Tigers had this one circled. For a little while since that wild 74-72, the epic seven-overtime game last year where the Aggies took down LSU in College Station. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. Our look at the Paycom Wooden Legacy. Bracket, the winner gets pinned in the second semifinal tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning here in Southern California, 2 Eastern on ESPN2. Long Beach State, who stunned Providence, will take on Wake Forest, and we could have a shocker here in the nightcap. As every time you think Arizona's got this one, they're going to pull away. Pepperdine comes right back and just will not go away. Yeah, I thought the Josh Green run earlier in the second half would have done it, right? You thought that was enough, but again, this is the exact test that a young Arizona team needs. You learn a lot about your team. Sean Miller tell you, though, he's going to be frustrated because he wants to win every game by 30. He's a competitor. But at the same time, at the end of the season, you're going to learn a lot about your team in this game. Zeke Naji in a reach in. And the foul is on Victor Ohia Obioha of Pepperdine. Well done, sir. Thank you. Well done. His second. Double bonus now for Arizona. Temp team foul. The sophomore from Nigeria will send Zeke Naji to the line. So when you look at the starting five that's played the bulk of the minutes, there's a re they, they, set, they start to sense the game too, right? When I talk about feel, it's not just read and react. It's, it's, not, it's also feeling what the other team's doing. And I feel like the Pepperdine defense has been good because they've gotten a sense of how Arizona wants to play. Lorenzo Romar brings Kessler Edwards and his four fouls back here with 4.44 to play. I think you got to do it. Arizona has struggled at the line tonight. Look, it's like North Carolina playing Clemson. You go for it, right? You go for it to win the game. I think that's Lorenzo Romar's coaching to win this game, not to play it, play it close or, or give them a good fight. They're, they're coaching to win this game, and right now the team's playing to win this game. The layup missed by Jotty Smith and Zeke Naji the rebound. Pepperdine a really good look. And off the ball, Zeke Naji and a foul as he bowls over Jotty Smith. All right, so here's why I really don't like it's it's probably a foul, but here's what I don't like. It's a switch. It's not actually a screen. This is a switch, all right? Jotty Smith's gonna switch. I, I don't know what you can do if you're Zeke Naji on that play. It's a switch. He's now being covered by Jaday Smith. Jaday Smith ran into him as much as he ran into Jaday Smith. So I, I get the, the whole screen. You can't roll into a guy. I don't know about that one. Kobe Ross swatted by Dylan Smith. Josh Green hustling, saves it. Loose, still batted around, and Pepperdine lost it to Nico Mannion. Dylan Smith. Got rebounded. Three! Remember that play. Just remember that play. Two point lead for Arizona and how they get it. And the senior steps up with a huge shot for Arizona. 
And there appears to be an injury for Zeke Naji. That's why they stop play. And it takes us to a TV timeout. But the scramble works for Arizona. The, the senior made the shot, but, but it's the winning play. I mean, look, how many winning players? There's one, right? There's one winning play. Here's another one. Zeke Naji getting it. He took one to the chops. Here's another winning play. And then the great pass, knockdown three. Again, those are winning plays, things to build upon. Let's see. Eighty three eighty one. This has been this a has wildly been awesome, entertaining man. Thanksgiving basketball game. Yeah, first of all, happy Thanksgiving, yes. folks. I happy really Turkey. do have, hope you had a great day. Uh, we're having a good day. This has been fantastic basketball. Pepperdine, Pepperdine playing out of their mind right now, and I'm enjoying it. Pepperdine has made 11 threes. Kessler Edwards makes it 12 threes for the Waves, and Pepperdine claws back on top. I mean, just defending ball screens, especially with a young group, is one of the hardest things you can do. I mean, look, Miles Simon, who we had on, was a hard thing to do at the NBA level. And that, that's really what separates themselves from, from the college game. The communication has to be there, just hasn't been there. Just a step late is a given up three. Pull up from Jamal Baker. And hustling, Josh Green chases it down. Dylan Smith from NBA range hits another big three. I mean, seriously, is this just not awesome? I'm like, anybody watching this game, if you're not having a good time, you, you don't like basketball and you probably don't like puppies. I mean, this is great. <laughs> the back and forth has been fantastic. Look, good execution. Here comes the ball screen, right? You're gonna go, you're gonna cut, ball screen, pick and pop. Here he is. Edwards, you're a step late. He's gonna bury it. And the answer again, winning basketball plays, right? Offensive rebound. Josh Green does not give up. You don't get a body. Kick out, deep three. Answer. Wow. So the ruling on the floor is a common foul on Chase Jeter. So they're going to the monitor to see if there should be an upgrade on yeah. the common foul on Jeter. Just, just, just making sure that it, it wasn't up around the chops. 252 remaining, and after Dylan Smith's three, he's got a season high 13. We'll take Arizona it, has made 10 threes tonight. I mean, he's a good three, four feet behind the NBA line. Behind the fourth ring. Yeah, he was he was in the fifth ring. <laughs> See, they're looking underneath. And I want to say they're looking at the other end where the foul was on Jeter. There's a scramble play kept alive. The hustle from Green leads to the Dylan Smith three. But then at the other end, the foul yeah, no, was called. That, that's what they're looking at. On Jeter. I, I don't know if it was on that offensive rebound where no foul was called, but th there was no there was nothing above the shoulders. Don't kill the flow of this game. So it's the double bonus if it stays a common foul. And it will be two free throws for Pepperdine. But if there is an upgrade to a flagrant one and they're checking on Jeter and that could be what they're looking at right there. I believe that is what they're trying to assess to see if it deserves yes. more than just a common foul on Chase Jeter. Yeah, originally they were looking at it on on the on on Chase Jeter, but it was actually on the other side down here on Pepperdine's offensive side. So it's a common foul on Jeter. Two yep. free throws with Pepperdine in the double bonus yep. now. We'll get... So Mike Cyphers with Keith Kimball and Tim Comer coming to let us know that it is a common foul. So Cameron Edwards is four for four from the line. Two shots. I'll tell you, man. The resiliency of this Pepperdine yeah. team. Yeah, that's what's so amazing, because at some point, you, there's that part of you, and it might be your subconscious that steps in and says, well, we can win this game. And that's where you're beat. You, you've got to walk up and say, we're going to win this game. We're going to knock down shots. They did it right there. Two straight foul shots. Walking. 21 for Cameron Edwards. Tied. 2.45 to go. Now it's going to come down to execution. Can this young Arizona team execute? And that means, oh Lord, just take a tough shot and get it. Dylan Smith, his third enormous three here in the second half. That, that is a bold decision. You think he's failing? That is a bold decision. Oh, don't get me wrong, I love it, but that doesn't go in. Oh, oh man. 
And yep. a travel yep. on Kessler Edwards. Wow, I mean, I, I said, I, you talk about just confidence. I mean, Dylan Smith has knocked down multiple big time three point shots. And you know, some have been open. That, that one was just, I'm able to get a step and get it off. It's a good shot. That's a senior stepping up. He's made four threes tonight. Zeke Naji, ah, offensive foul. Got him. See, that's where Zeke Naji, as he gets older, right, the initial contact wasn't called, right? Initial contact's not, not called, but you have to know if you're Zeke Naji, the second, there's a, that's not called. Second one, you know he's taking a dive. And that's one of those plays, like I've said before, that was probably a charge and a flop at the same time. Four fouls on Naji. He'll, he'll get that right the next time. He won't get baited into it like he did that time. Another great battle between the Pac-12 and the West Coast Conference today. Oh, this is great. Colby Ross for the lead. Or rather for the tie, I should say, three-point game. Skyler Chavez ties the game. 20 for Chavez. Somewhere midway through the second half, I went from analyst to fan. You know, I'm just a basketball fan right now. This is good hoops. High pressure hoops, too, and both teams have responded. Earlier today, Gonzaga outlasted Oregon in overtime in battle for Atlantis. Got to pass out of that. Nico Mannion, the floater, and an offensive foul, a charge on Mannion, his third. And Pepperdine in a tie game with 107 remaining gets the basketball. I've said I've said so much about making winning plays. Well, both teams have been able to do it. I don't like it. That is not a charge. Not a charge. Still still working his way over. The time Nico Mannion left his feet, defender was still in the in the uh, in the restricted arc. Season worst 17 Wildcat turnovers tonight. If I had my way, I would do away with the block charge in general more offensive minded clearly <laughs> Colby Ross Travel. the pull up and the rebound Arizona all over the defensive glass and it's Naji. 11th rebound Naji and Mannion have double doubles tonight uh, I've been saying it, it comes down to execution but really it's been shot making today no There's timeouts for Arizona Pepperdine has one remaining this is a great learning experience for this young Arizona team with, with high expectations. Good ball movement by the Wildcats. And Zeke Naji gives Arizona the lead. Nico Mannion did a great job moving the defense with his eyes. It's not just a basketball. Sometimes we use ball fakes, pass fakes, pump fakes. But you move the defense with your eyes. He was able to move that defense, find a passing lane, and pick up that hockey assist. Sometimes the hockey assist, we, we undervalue the hockey assist, right? Hockey figured it out. That matters. The guy that got the hockey assist made the play. And Nico Mannion, great job moving the defense with his eyes, finding the open man in Josh Green. Josh Green, little ping pong pass, touch pass, there you go. Dunk Zeke Naji, well done. That is a great answer. Now can you defend? You better defend that three-point line. I'll tell All right. you what. The third three-point line. <laughs> 19 seconds. You're Lorenzo Romar Pepperdine. Colby Ross has not made a shot in the second half. Where are you going you with the basketball? You still go Colby Russ. He's still been able to get to the basket. He hasn't made a lot of shots, but he's been able to get turn a corner. And the ball screen, to me, you've got a young group out there. The ball screen is what you've got to go to, whether it's a side ball screen up top of the key. Put this young Arizona team in a ball screen situation. Make them communicate to get a stop because that's been an issue for them defensively. It's been 15 years since Pepperdine has beaten a ranked team. And look, you don't run a set to score anymore. That, that's almost gone. There's no X's and O's like, we're going to do this, you're going to screen and we're going to get a left. Doesn't work that way. You put your team in a situation to test the defense in a way that opens up opportunities. 10 seconds. Here is Ross. Off balance. First field goal of the second half, and we're tied. Arizona going for the win. Nico Mannion flipped it up and in with two seconds to go. Colby Ross from midcourt. 
and Arizona escapes with a win. And Nico Mannion to the rescue for the Wildcats. What an amazing game here tonight on Thanksgiving. Well, I'm heartbroken for this Pepperdine squad who played a fantastic basketball game. 93-91. This was back and forth. 24 lead changes. Is that even still current? Are, are we up to 25? 25. 20, 25 lead 25 changes. 25 after Ross tied the game. Back and forth. This is a Pepperdine squad that really relied on five guys to score. Great balance from five guys. But Arizona having the final answer. It's Nico Mannion who, who didn't have the best game. But this play down the stretch didn't have a great angle. But goodness gracious was able to turn the corner. Get it up off the glass. Kind of the Xavier Simpson skyhook we saw a little bit of. Team who had the ball last one, essentially. Oh, and it was man. Nico Mannion. After Colby Ross came up with an enormous bucket oh, for Pepperdine. Come on, so that's what you do. You go to your guy, Colby Ross. He's able to turn his corner. But in transition, did not stop the basketball. And what I like about that shot from Nico Mannion is he knew there was enough time. He gave his team an opportunity. If you missed that shot, offensive rebound could win that game. Great, great basketball game. In transition, you don't stop the ball early enough. You've got to take away all driving angles, and any much of an angle, but he still found a way. Holy smokes, what a basketball game. Happy Thanksgiving. This was fun. Jeez. Our Paycom player of the game. Pick one. Nico Manning with his winning <laughs> bucket. 16 points, also 11 assists in the ball game. Oh, man. And you got to give it up to Pepperdine, Lorenzo Romar's oh. team. The way they battled and fought and gave number 14 Arizona all they could handle tonight. So, no letdown. No letdown now. Pepperdine's got They found a little something. they got to keep things rolling. They could be dangerous in that West Coast Conference. You, you see Penn, Arizona tomorrow night, Long Beach, Wake Forest. That'll be an interesting one because I, I didn't learn a ton about either team. They both kind of had to fight through. Oh, man, looking for fun. It'll be fun tomorrow night. The Arizona Wildcats now 7-0 were threatened, and Nico Manning ends up hitting the winner with two seconds to go to lift Arizona into the semifinals. For John Crispin and our ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein saying happy Thanksgiving from Southern California. We had a treat for you on Thanksgiving night.